introduction to HTML. Today we're really going to be looking at HTML in real specific detail and starting to practice our code. HTML or hypertext markup language is a markup language or a programming, oh, not, a mar a pro not a programming, it is a markup language used for the creation of web pages. It is pretty much the standard used across the internet. We've been using HTML for many years and it's developed many times. We're up to uh, approximately HTML5 at the moment and it's the latest version. And even then, we're really moving towards XHTML. Now, the benefit of HTML is that it's a fairly relaxed programming language. What this means is if you have a small error in your code, usually Google Chrome or the browser that you're using will still be able to display the majority of your website. And there's usually not any impact to your website in terms of it failing to load. Okay? Obviously, if you've got major issues, it'll stop. But a few small issues usually won't cause any issues. It's the standard used across the websites uh, around the world at the moment. And the code isn't case sensitive. That means you can type it in uppercase and you can type it in lowercase. You can type it in combination of. It will still work no matter what. Now you've got to think, if it's this relaxed, then there's a lot of programming that's gone into getting HTML to work, which means it can sometimes be a little bit slower and need much more powerful software in order for it to run. Now how does more powerful software work when we're thinking about things like mobile phones, when we're thinking about things like TVs, PlayStations. All of these bits of hardware have web browsers on them. And quite often, they don't have enormous uh, processing power potential. I mean, I know my phone is fairly powerful, but my TV my $30 TV that has a web browser. How does that work? Well, XHTML saves the day here. XHTML uses HTML, but also adds in XML structuring. XML is, is another language. It's very strict though. So if you make some mistakes, your website will stop working. It's very important that you get your syntax right, your programming right. You make a spelling mistake, you forget to close a bracket, these things will stop your website from working if using HTML. Now, XHTML is more widely compatible because it, because it doesn't handle errors. You can use web, or, uh, web browsing software that isn't as powerful, therefore your TVs can run websites using XHTML your mobile phones, your PlayStations, all sorts of devices, much more widely compatible. To increase the efficiency when using XHTML, it requires that your code is written in lowercase. You cannot use uppercase programming uh, markup languages in XHTML documents. What is the actual difference for Google Chrome how does it know which one you're using? Well, if you think back to our previous lesson where we spoke about the doc type declaration that sits in your website and declares to Chrome that you're using HTML, there is also a doc type declaration that says, hey, I'm using X HTML, not HTML. So that Google Chrome knows which version you're using. On your screen, I am showing to you our base code. This code here, at a minimum, is going to appear in every single page on your website. I guarantee it. Because if it doesn't, your website will not work. Now what have I got here? If I look at the top, what I'm going to call line one in the green is doc type. Now you see I've got this angled bracket. That angled bracket is what we will call a tag. Or sometimes we refer to them as declarations. Now I'll go back to our previous structure. 
from one of our previous lessons. If I go back to where we were looking at CSS, tags, elements. P is an element or a tag, just like the doc type declaration that we were just looking at is also an element or a tag. So let me go forward again. Inside of that, it says HTML public. We're using doc type declaration for XHTML. So that's the stricter version of HTML. Then on the second line, I've got my first HTML tag in red. From here on, every single tag comes in pairs. So you'll see I have a red HTML tag at the top, and then down the bottom I have another red HTML tag. You'll see the second one has a little slash before it. That's called a closing tag. Whereas at the top, no slash, opening tag. Anything that I want to be considered HTML code needs to fit inside of those tags. So you'll see inside I have a head and I have a body. My head opens and then my head closes and then my body opens and then my body closes. So opening and closing is important. You'll also see that I've done some colouring. This colouring is pretty uh, arbitrary. It doesn't matter what colours I've got there. But if we're using web authoring software like Dreamweaver, for example, it usually colours your tags to help you find the matching pairs. It just makes it that little bit easier for you when you're editing your code. The other thing you'll notice is my tags are written in lowercase. Now, lowercase is the requirement for XHTML, so make sure when we're copying we use lowercase. And lastly, you'll obviously have noticed, like I said before, there are pairs. If you have an opening and a closing, that works in XHTML. If you forget to put the closing tag in, your XHTML will no longer work. So all of our web pages will have this code. You're welcome to copy this. Okay, I've shared with you the slides. You're welcome to copy this um, and paste it into your website when we get into Dreamweaver. The next thing I'm going to talk to you about is some key code snippets. Now, in the body, when we want to display text, there are a couple of different types of text that we can use. We have a few different levels of headings. There are uh, more le levels than what I've got displayed on screen, but I'm sticking with just the five because I can't imagine you would need more than that for your page. And then we have our paragraph text. You can also see on the left side, they are formatted, and on the right side is what the code would look like to display that in HTML. So if I typed this here into my, let me just get a uh, laser pointer for you. If I typed this here into my body of my website, this would display. This will display if I used this code. So you'll see for heading ones, I use H1 tags, H2s, H3s, all the way down. And for my normal paragraph text or my normal body text, I use the P tag. The next key code snippet that you would want to know about is how to get links and how to get images to display on a website. Again, on the left side is what they look like. On the right side is the code behind them that gets them to work. You see my first example, I've got this is a link and it is a hyperlink. If I hover over it, it is actually a working link there. That's the HTML code. There is an opening tag and it ends with that bracket. There is a closing tag and in the middle is some text. That text in the middle is what's displayed. The hyperlink goes to that site there that is declared inside of the anchor tag. Next, we've got the image. It's using an image tag. That there is the source of the image. That's the text that would display if the image failed. The width of the image, the height of the image. And for this one here, we close the image off at the end. When you're creating an image, if you wanted to edit it, 
you would change the source, you would change the alternate text, and you would change the sizes to match what's needed, but the rest of the code is identical. We also have different types of lists that appear on our website. We might be making a list of our um, three things that we like to do on the weekends, not in any order. We call that an unordered list. And here's the code. Bold to make the text bold. UL to say I'm starting a list that is not ordered, an unordered list. And then LI to indicate this is the first item on the list and then it closes. The next item on the list, and then it closes. The next item on the list, and then it closes, and that's the end of my unordered list. Likewise, for the ordered list, you can see, same thing, the bold text, OL this time for ordered list, and you'll see now they display as numbers, because I'm now writing my three favorite colors in order. Additionally, we have tables. Now tables, the code is fairly simple. You need to tell Google Chrome that you're making a table. Then you need to put a row in, and inside of that row, you need to put some data. Table, table row, table data. The heading of your table might be a table head, and that makes it stand out that little bit. Very simple, very basic, but let's have a look. Here we are. In the first row, there is a heading called first name, and in the next cell, there's a heading called last name. You see first name, last name. Then we start a new row. So we're now in the second row. There is some data, Jill, there it is, and some more data, Smith, there it is. That's the end of the second row. Now we're in our third row. In the first column is Eve, and in the second column is Jackson. And that's the end of the third row. And that's the end of the table. So you see, the code is really quite logical when you look at it in this really simple laid out way. It gets quite confusing when you're sitting in Dreamweaver, you're texting, and you have a thousand lines of code, particularly if you haven't ordered it or uh, formatted it in a way that is conducive to reading. So those bits of code, those little snippets, I want you to have a play around with in text edit. Okay, and I'll, I'll take us back now to here we are, our base code, and if you click on to our next video, I'll get you started on how we do this in TextEdit.